middle distance running, you have higher intensity and then there's lower intensity. So they might start their race more in an aerobic phase, but they know when it comes down to the end, they have to turn on the sprinting ability. As we move up the longer distances, we can see that the body shape tends to change quite a lot. We will find that they don't look quite as powerful at the middle and longer distances. We'll also find that there's less muscularity, especially in the upper body. They don't use the arms to drive quite as powerfully as the sprinters do. However, we will see a very efficient running stride, so no energy is wasted. Although most people think of sports nutrition, particularly for endurance events, about being all carbs, we've now changed our ideas around the training load, at least, to say that a distance runner's carbohydrate intake should fluctuate from day to day. Some sessions might be best done with low carbohydrate availability. That means having less glycogen in the muscle or deliberately not having the breakfast or the carbohydrate during the session. By having low carbohydrate around those sessions, you stimulate the muscle to do more adaptation. It's a little bit like altitude training, that you're trying to put extra stress into the system in a training sense you don't perform so well, but you drive the adaptation. As we move through to the longer distances, up towards the marathon, we'll see the footwear type changes. The midsoles become a lot thicker to enable us to absorb a lot of the impact of the hard floor, repetitive again and again throughout that longer distance of travel. An efficient energy absorption system is going to help those athletes not to tire. Distance running requires a different mindset to a sprint. It's an enduring concentration. It is about relying upon the decision making and sticking to the plan over a prolonged period of time. Elite runners tend to use associative cognitive strategies. This is where they focus on what's going on inside them to help them keep their focus on the race. It's about staying present in the race without overly focusing on what is going on around you. One of the other nutrients that's very important to think about in distance events is fluid because when you're out doing those long sessions, you're sweating. So we work with them to find a happy balance between allowing a little bit of dehydration to occur, but replacing as much fluid with the carbohydrate in it for the muscle fuel and the brain fuel to, um, to try and find that balance between losing performance from fatigue and stopping or slowing down to grab the nutrition. One of the main things we like to do is quantify performance. So any Olympian, any professional athlete, it's ideal for them to know exactly what their performance levels are. So VO2 is something that we use, which really is the volume of oxygen they could uptake in milliliters of oxygen per kilogram per minute. We hook the athlete up to an open circuit spirometer. They have a gas mask over their face, their nose is plugged, and then they have a tube which connects to our gas analyzer. So as they're exercising, we can see what their oxygen consumption is at rest. And then as we incrementally increase the intensity on a treadmill or bike, we can actually see their oxygen uptake linearly rise with time until a point where they do not increase any more oxygen uptake. At that point, we know they've either reached their peak or is it truly VO2 max. So we might see a normal VO2 for the average person, maybe 35 or 40 mLs per kg per minute. Some of these athletes, we can see up to 80, 90 milliliters of oxygen per kilogram per minute, meaning that when the blood rushes by, they have a better extraction capability than us. Through training, really what we do is we find your anaerobic threshold, the point where your body is not efficient at using sugar anymore and it wants to push to oxygen. So when it wants to switch fuels, we actually train them at that anaerobic threshold. So we're trying to push the anaerobic threshold further and further away so they become more efficient. They could do more before fatiguing. And that's key to any Olympic athlete.